you know, a good sign of a good fast food is, uh, you can really judge the quality of fast food based on just, like, their fountain soda. So this is Burger King Coke. It tastes sour. Hey, welcome to our movie reviews. I do these. They're kind of easy to do, and, uh, they're good filler videos. Today we're reviewing Dune, also known as Sand, also known as Weird Movie. Um, so this is... Uh, one of the most hyped up movies, um, in a while, that's not part of, like, a, you know, a greater cinematic universe or based off of a already well-established property. I guess it's based off the book, but, like, you know, uh, based off previous movies or shows, whatever. And, uh, I was pretty excited for it. I thought it looked neat, um, but, yeah, this was very hyped up, so, uh, a lot of people are comparing this like the new Lord of the Rings, the new Star Wars, the new Harry Potter, this new multi, you know, billion dollar franchise. And uh, that's a weird thing to slate something as when uh, there's only one movie in the series out. Um, so, are you going to get go into this movie and uh, think that it's going to be like a um, masterpiece? It's going to be a, a cornerstone of cinema? Of cinema? Not really. Um, it's not really that, and if it could be that, but again, you're this, you're gonna see me s s say it a lot. This is, of course, just for the first part of a much larger story. But that being said, for a first part, it's pretty compelling. Now, this is coming from someone who's never read the books. Um, I came in, and I honestly I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, it had a lot of um. The, the plot really takes center stage over the characters in this one, and, um, usually, and the, and the world building as well. It takes center stage over the characters, and I usually don't like that. I usually like my stories more character-driven than, uh, necessarily plot-driven. But in this scenario, I, I'll, I'll accept it. Um, plot's really well thought out, uh, and for an hour, for a two-hour, thirty-long-minute movie... It crams in a lot of world building, like a lot, you know, with this emperor and different sectors, and they're going to war, and this indigenous people, um, for uh, the planet, the main planet they're on, um, spice is, has a lot of spices, which powers, like, the spaceships, and the indigenous people have blue eyes from being exposed to the spices. It's kind of little stuff like that that I really like, um... I like seeing some of the wildlife, although it is mostly a desert, so you don't see too much of that. Um, I like learning different little tidbits about the world and, like, the environment and how uh, their people have, like, adapted to live on it. Like, um, for example, it's literally too hot to live on for humans during, um, certain hours of the day. So, most of the, um, houses and buildings... They're either, like, underground, or they can be, like, completely, like, locked up, you know? Um, or they make these special kinds of suits that, because you're friends so much, it kind of recycles the water so that you don't lose as much, um, energy on the desert. Uh, the main, I guess, animal environment, or really, the main, one of the big parts of the movie is this giant sandworm from Spongebob. And, um, I really like it, kind of represents how, uh, these indigenous people on this planet, you know, they kind of, they know how to get around, um, uh, the sand worm, and it's only really when the, uh, invaders fuck around in the desert does the sand worm show up, because show they're not experiencing it. I thought that was an interesting little take. I like how they have little machines called thumpers that attract the sand worm, um, I like how they do, like, a certain kind of, like, movement, to try and mask their movement with the sand moving. It's like, it's all just little tiny world building details that just are just cool. Like, they're just really neat. They make me care about this world. Um, and I want to see more of this. I, I, the plot is also extremely pretty well thought out. I was pretty engaged with it throughout the whole time, even if the characters themselves weren't that interesting. Um, a lot, a lot, sort of, like, political talk, like, uh, it, it kind of, it kind of reminds me of, like, the episode one Fair Menace, the Star Wars, you know, how they're always talking about, like, the Senate, and, um, 
the oncoming war and, like, struggles for powers. It's like if that kind of aspect of the Star Wars, um, prequel trilogy was good, <laughs> um, where it actually is, like, this power struggle that I'm interested in, and, like, all sides, sure, it's, like, there's an evil side, and there's, but, like, they're all like, a little bit fucked up, um, but they all also make sense, which I think is really important, uh, I want to see more of the indigenous people ever, because, in to me, they're the, and obviously it seems like we're going to be seeing that a lot more in future movies, but to me, that kind of seems like the most important, or the most interesting part, and then our main kind of group is just like normal dudes, and then the um, bad guys of the film are like these weird albino gross alien people, and they work really well as villains, because like I just look at them, and I I don't like them, so it's just by looking at them. Um, Dave Bautista plays the main bad guy. Um, Jason Momoa. It, I should probably go over the cast. Um, a lot of celebrity actors, which I I, I like. I think they did well enough. Um, it does have that syndrome where it doesn't feel like I'm looking at the characters. I'm just kind of looking at Aquaman and uh, Dave Bautista. Um, I don't know. Uh, they, I think all the act actors did well. I think some of the dialogue sometimes is a little bit too stilted and uh, exposition-y. Um, but I understand you gotta set up this world. Um, and that really is the core theme of that you will know throughout this movie is that it's, it's very much a prologue to a greater story and that kind of affects everything, including my review of this movie. Um, I really did not enjoy Tim Timothy Chalamet. I, I think both his acting and how his character is written was not a big fan of. It just... There were only a few scenes where it felt like he actually cared about what was going on. You know? Um, Thanos is in this movie. He does a neat performance. I enjoyed him, I guess. Um, but yeah, this uh, like I said before, this is very much a... Uh, plot-driven story rather than a character-driven story, which I'm usually not a big fan of, but I think since the world's so well-built, um, I enjoy it. And that's kind of just my theme of my just general opinion of this movie. I just enjoyed it a lot. Um, that's probably my shortest review I've done yet, um, but I, like, I just liked it, you know? Um, I'm not even gonna give this one a review score because... It's, again, prologue, bigger story. It'd be weird for me to um, review this part when we don't know the West of story because it kind of leaves off on a little bit of an anticlimactic ending. But, like, me currently, I think, oh, yeah, that ending was a little lame, a little bad. Um, but who knows? Maybe by the time um, we have the bigger picture of the story and we can look back on it, um, it might be the perfect spot to end off the first movie. We won't know. But I will say, did not like the length. Two hours, thirty minutes, a little bit too long. I understand this is a big, world-building, multi-part, sci-fi, uh, fantasy. I expected it to be pretty long. But, like, I, I don't know. I think 20 minutes, 15, could have been shaved off of this. Uh, apparently, this is a movie that really does, um, put in everything from the original book into it. Um very fateful, but honestly, uh, after watching this movie, I understand why a lot of studios cut stuff from the bill, from, the, why a lot of studios, uh, cut stuff from the book, um, some stuff just did not care about, um, but yeah, it was still a very enjoy mo enjoyable movie, and, uh, that's just my thoughts. Bye.